recent years, Carl's Rolls-Royce Derwent has been mated to a truck. He has plans of using this jet as a film industry wind machine or a disaster simulator, or maybe even the ultimate smoke machine. Carl designed and built a custom starting panel. All the necessary switches, gauges and throttle adjustments are easily managed. All controls neatly plug into the side of the engine cell. Fuel and batteries are on board the truck. This next run is just an idle test. Even at idle, the Rolls-Royce Derwent is a stunning display of vintage jet engineering. Now Carl has moved to another location, he is ready for a full power test. Again, the instrumentation is simply plugged into the engine. All the systems are quickly connected to start the engine easily. Here is a beautiful example of a state-of-the-art backyard jet. The turbocharger is from a Saab automobile. This jet is based from a design on the internet. Built by Alan Myers, it has evolved through three designs. Alan's jet runs on LPG, has an oil pump and oil cooling. Water cooling is also used around the turbine housing. Alan has built a full digital instrumentation to control his engine and devised a simple way of starting using a vacuum cleaner blower. His dream is to one day own a small commercial gas turbine.
this project has given him all the required information to fully understand the gas turbine engine. To ensure the long life of the turbine, Allen found the combustion chamber design is critical. This backyard jet could be made practical by becoming a power source for an electrical generator. This engine displays no waste fuel passing by the exhaust. The power output could be made significantly higher by using kerosene as a fuel. Overall, Allen's backyard jet engine displays a reliable source of gas turbine power and the simplicity of the gas turbine. It is good to see the tradition of the backyard jet continues today. With information easily available on the internet, enthusiasts around the world are enjoying the fun of a simple backyard jet. Allen's jet, built in 2003, is a substantial improvement from the backyard jet Carl and I made 16 years earlier. It is nice to know, with the video footage shot all those years ago, our first backyard jet can be shared with today's jet builders. It's time for the end of the video feature and I love putting strange stuff at the end of my videos for those who have suffered the full length feature. It's a trip back to 1990 to see a Japanese 24 inch aerial shell being loaded. Looking back on this video it reminds me of so many people that I haven't seen in many many years. That's the really good thing about bringing out old videos. They're fantastic for reminding you of how things used to be. The company shooting the show was Sid Howard Fireworks for the New Year's Eve fireworks display in Sydney. Of interest, this shell is loaded time fuse down. The lifting charge is separate and has already been loaded. The shell rides on metal lugs within the mortar which supports it above the lifting charge. There is also a sizeable gap around the shell. This gap is essential so the shell does not get ripped apart by the walls of the mortar when it is launched. Once ignited, a high velocity cushion of gas via the gunpowder lift propels the shell skywards. These large Japanese aerial shells take months to make. Sadly, these days, due to various reasons, they are rarely ever seen in Australian fireworks displays. Nothing else ever matches the beauty of these shells.